Today, I'm going to show you how to transform, upcycle, or refashion a jumper into a cardigan with an opening at the front and a zip. Now, this jumper is actually an Alexandra McQueen pure wool, very nice jumper. So this is how to make a jumper into a cardigan, stroke jacket, stroke with a zip opening. To make your jumper into a cardigan, you need to cut it up the front. Now, really try very hard to make it exactly in the middle, unless you're making a feature of it, and in which case, make it very obviously to the side or going diagonally. diagonally. But I'm, I'm cutting mine so it falls exactly in the middle. Now, there are a few tricks and a few things that can make it a lot easier for you, because you are sewing a very stretchy fabric that comes undone. Now, because this is a knitted fabric, any sort of knitted, um, knitted webbing or edging, this is the, the knitted fold over edging stuff. So anything that's kind of knitted and in a strip and finished off can be a really good way to finish off that edge. So this would be stitched on to the edge, folded back so it forms a hem, and you would either hand sew the edge or top stitch it. So the things that you look at for finishing off the edge, it, it is a good idea if they kind of have a bit of give in them because, you know, your jumper has a bit of give in it, doesn't it? So you could use some lace, you could also use stretchy fabric. Now, if I was using this stretchy fabric, because it hasn't got a finished off edge, I would actually put it right sides together and then fold it back and with the hem there, hand sew it or top stitch it. Um, and then obviously you could use bias binding as well. Right, let's talk zips. Um, I think zips are like clothing or dressmaking jewellery. And when you're going to see them, it is worth spending quite a lot of money on them. Now, I'm a bit obsessed and always have been with finding double open-ended zip. And the reason is because of this. I think on all my jackets and my coats, it's much more in flattering if it opens and splays out in a V going down to the hem at the bottom and it opens and splays out in a V in the opposite direction where the neck is. And I just think that that is a much more flattering sort of silhouette line than if the zip is done up all the way to the bottom. So I'm like a kind of barrel, closed barrel thing. But if you can only get a regular open-ended zip, i.e. it just opens at one end, um, and that's much easier to get, then that's absolutely fine, because that's all you really need. It's just me. So that's zips. So when you've decided on, on the edging that you're going to use, then we're ready to go. I've got my jumper inside out, very important. And we've already cut an opening in it, which for me is in the center. Now I've got some strips, badly cut strips, of iron-on interfacing. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line them up with the edge. Now also, <laughs> the reason why I've got these edges close together is because I need to make sure that I've got the same amount of stretch or no non-stretch on each side of the jumper stroke cardigan because I've got these 
um, stripes. So it would be really obvious if I do stretch one side out more than the other. So what you want to do, if I put that out the way for the moment, okay, what you want to do, now if you're doing it on a regular ironing board, that'd be better, maybe, um, or put some paper in here, because you don't want to iron the um, interfacing onto here. So I'm ironing it as close to the raw cut edge as possible. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to stabilise that edge so that it doesn't unfray and also to make it easier for me to sew. Now what's really important is on this interfacing, uh, on one side you've got a bit of glue and on the other side you've got nothing. So obviously you don't want to glue where you don't want to iron where the, the glue is. So it must, must, must be facing down the glue side. But I think you sort of know that, don't you? And then you're going to get an iron, which you will have tested out on your, your jumper already, because you don't want to, you don't want to burn your jumper. And just get it pressed into place. Now there's often a bit of discussion about to use steam or, or not to use steam and I think it's totally, um, for me, determined by what I'm ironing the interfacing onto. So I'm just going to stabilise one side first because I'm working on a tiny ironing board. So I'm not, I'm being really, really careful not to stretch the knitted stuff out of shape. And I'm trying to place this kind of close to the edge. So when you think you've got it on one side and it is all secure, start lining up the other side of your cardigan. So do exactly the same to the other side, making sure your neck lines up in length with the hem. So when you've done that, it should look like this. Now you can cut your um, interfacing a little bit wider if you want. But now turn it the right way round. So get your zip and decide where is it you know like where are you having the opening are you having it right up by the top of the neck are you having it a bit lower down are you having it a bit lower down now my opening the top of the zip is supposed to start one two three four five so i want it to kind of start about there but yours may start somewhere else but once you've decided, open up your zip. This part is all about keeping track, or let me put this here, keeping track of the position of your zip being exactly the same on both sides and being aware of what's the top, you know, the right side of your zip and what's the wrong side of your zip because it's very easy to get mixed up. So, I've got it the right way up at the moment. I've got the zip undone. I'm going to turn it over so it's right sides together with my fabric. And I've got it close to the edge of um, the raw edge, the opening. Now, all the while, when you're doing anything, putting pegs on or pins or gluing into place, you have to be obsessed <laughs> with not stretching this fabric underneath, which is why we ironed on that little bit of stabiliser. Okay. So that's that side. Now I have to flop this one over so it's right sides with the fabric. I've got to make sure that the opening is in the right place. And I've got to make sure that where it finishes 
is in the right place as well. And then I'm just going to put pegs along there. So everything is pegged into place. My zip is right sides together with the right side of the, the knitted fabric. Now, sometimes in this situation, I have been known to use finely cut double-sided sticky tape. So long as I'm not stitching over where the sticky tape is, um, it's okay. Or I would use Bonderweb, cut very, very fine, like two millimeters, and I would glue this into place. But I'm a little bit worried about the rubber that's on my zip, so I'm not gonna do that today. What I'm gonna do is, before I do anything else, I'm just going to zigzag along the edge, almost like an overcast stitch, in black to hold my zip in place so I don't have to worry about it too much. <laughs> so I've pushed the zippers out of the way so that I can begin. I've got my sewing machine on a zigzag stitch. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches just to begin. And I'll start to take these pegs out of the way. Now the important thing is not to stretch. Now I'm just get these um, zippers back down. So when you've pushed your zippers back out of the way, you can start driving up. Now see how I'm one on one off as if I'm doing an overcast stitch. It's because I'm just doing this to get that I'm just doing this to get that zipper safely in place so I don't need to worry about it. Now when I get to where the opening is, I know that I'm going to be driving the end of my zipper off. So I'll just do that now. So that's what we have. And it will be like that, but not yet. So do the same to your other side. So just in case you don't know, because we're doing the other side, we start at the other end because we always want our fabric to the left. So I'm going to be beginning how I ended, which was to bend the end of the zip out of the way. So I'll be start, I'm starting at the top, yeah? And then making my way down to the bottom. So that's what we've got so far, but nothing is finished off, is it? The edge isn't finished off. We have got a functioning zip, which I'm not gonna show you because I'm worried that I'll pull the threads off. But basically, We've got the zip inserted onto both sides, held in place, and I could do that up there, but I'm not. Oops. And it would go up to there. But it's not finished off. So now we're going to apply some type of tape, bias binding, edging, or lace. We're using lace to finish it off and hold it all in place and stabilise it. So, everything hopefully lining up well. We've got that set in position, so I know now that there's no risk of me, you know, putting it back to front or upside down or the wrong way round. So that's always very reassuring to get it to that stage. Now, I flopped my zip back over, look, like that, in the way that we sewed it. So I can think about how I'm going to be um, putting the lace on. So, so my, my, my top is the right way round at the moment, yeah? And I've just flopped back the zip. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be stitching this lace on 
something like that and then I'll be folding it back so you get like a nice finish on the inside. Now if you were using regular fabric or bias binding you could still apply it like that and then you, you top stitch it on or you can open out your fabric, put it right sides together, stitch it on and then turn it back. Now for this job I definitely am going to use some thinly cut strips of bonder web. Now I would normally cut it a bit thinner than that actually but I think this will be all right for today. So I've put the iron on so that it's ready and I've laid on my thinly cut bonder web more or less along the edge of um, where I placed the interfacing before to stabilise it. So I've put it along the edge where I want it. I'm working in small sections. Now what is very important is you need about a two centimetre overhang of whatever edging you're doing and you'll find out why afterwards. And I'm laying I'm laying the, the lace on top I haven't tested this which is naughty so hopefully it won't burn it so I've got my iron I'm holding it to fix the bonder web into place now you could tack this in place or you could pin it in place if you want but this is what I'm doing now when you're attaching your stuff that you can't see because I've got black and black you've got to be really careful not to um, interfere with that little bit at the top yeah so just keep doing that laying your bonder web on close to the edge laying your lace or edging stuff on top and then glue it in in place or pin it or whatever so do that to both sides the front opening of your jumper cardigan oh my goodness <laughs> I actually quite like it like this but I can't have it like this because I've made it to go like that so I've glued it on both sides I've left a little overhang two centimeters at each end so this is the neck end that's the bottom end I've done it to both sides and now I'm going to get a zipper fur because I want to um, do I need a zipper fur? yeah maybe I don't I want to sew close to the edge now if you haven't got a zipper fur don't worry because there should be enough room for you to sew with a, a fat foot So I decided not to put a zipper foot on. Um, yeah, I decided not to put the zipper foot on. I'm leaving the big fat foot, the regular foot, because I I want to show you how you can. Now, wherever your zigzag thing is, or wherever you've got the button that makes the needle go to the left, do that, and then I think it should be okay. So starting at the bottom. So we have already glued it into place, haven't we? Now I'm going to put the edge of the foot on the edge of my... No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm getting a bit more in. So I put the needle in. And I'm going to go forwards and back. So I've got my needle to the left. I'm using the big fat foot. And because we've got it glued in place... I don't think anything's going to move. Now, if you found this just the slightest bit tricky, can I recommend that you do a slight zigzag stitch because it's much easier to have control of it. So, you know, 
half the size of the zigzag stitch that we did before. So I'm going right up to the zip, but I'm making sure that um, I'm on that braiding because we're supposed to be stitching or, or lace. We're supposed to be stitching the lace on. That's why we're doing this, yeah? But remember, if you find this tricky, do it with a zigzag. So I'm finishing up at the neck, like that, and we've got this stitched on and it's going to be folded back. So do the same on the other side, but you'll be starting at the other end of your cardigan. So I suppose you'll be starting at the neck. So if you're sewing the other side and you've got close to your um, zip pulls, Leave the needle in and carefully drive them out the way. Now if they won't get out the way, now if you couldn't get them out the way, then come off the machine and go back on again. You see? <laughs> Before I fold it back, I thought you might like to see it with that, that edging on there, which is quite nice, but it's not going to be like that. It's going to be folded back. Because I know that as with the movement with the cardigan, it will sort of peep out, which I kind of prefer the idea of. Right, so you can see what we're aiming for. I've already prepped one side. So what we're aiming for is this sort of finish. Is this sort of finish. Okay, now I've bonded this all into place, but I'm going to show you how to do it. And then it can be finished by hand, which I think I'm going to do, because I owe it to this expensive <laughs> jumper that I've chopped up. Um, but you could just as easily top stitch it. I'm just not sure yet if I want to see top stitching on there. So, and, and mine's going to sort of, Come down a bit like that like a collar anyway so what we have done is that so now I'm going to turn it inside out so I can show you how to basically glue it into place and get a nice finish so I've turned the jumper inside out and I'm gonna show you how we get this nice finish here. You need uh, an iron with steam on a wall setting. I'll take this nice one out of the way so you can just see this. You're gonna fold it back wherever it naturally wants to go. Now there's a lot of pressing involved here and you don't wanna melt your zip. I don't know what your zip's like so just stay away from the plasticky bits of your zip. So I'm doing lots of steam. I'm pulling this back to wherever it naturally wants to go. And I'm pressing along so that that's folded back. So I feel where it wants to go and then I press. But staying away a bit from that zip. So do that all the way down. Now when you've done that, get some of that bonder web where you you've cut it mm, sort of like a centimeter I suppose and you know we left that overhang at the end here it's because we're going to press back and glue a little hem like that before folding it back like that so that it ends up being neat up there so I'm just going to take a small amount of bonder web Put it in place, fold back that hem and give it a good press so that it holds that hem in place and then hopefully it will naturally fall yeah, where it should. Now get your long strip of bonder web, put it in line with the edge 
but not over the edge because you don't want to get glue on your iron. Do that all the way down, being very careful to make sure that everything is in position on the other side and using steam and a wall setting start gluing everything into place but be careful not to melt your zip I'm going to keep saying that because it can be a problem so get it all in place first okay so get it in place first and then come in with pressing and steam now do it all the way down and before you're about that much away what is that 20 centimeters uh, five-ish inches away from the um, other end before you get down there start preparing that end now remember don't get any glue I'm in an awkward position but don't get any glue on your iron that's a complete disaster if you do so I've glued that down first give it a good press so that that was folded back first then we put it there and then get all of this glued into place as well now I really know this looks really nice inside out but that's a good thing isn't it because um, yeah, it's a sign of quality. So, um, now if you didn't want to use the Bonder Web stuff to glue it into place, you can of course tack it in place first or pin it. Now, I'm going to hand sew that later on because I want it to be done all delicately. Um, but that's the right side so you can see. So the right side's really good. So let's put it on the dummy and have a look. So there you go. So in my mind, that is much more wearable for someone like me. Lots of jumpers, they don't look so flattering as jumpers, but stick an opening and a zip in them, or just a button and a loop, and yeah, it's really good. So should we see, oh, also what I was thinking, before I go on, is I can still wear it as a jumper. I'll just wear it back to front. Is that weird? No, it's not, is it? Or is it? Before I try it on, I thought you might want to see it a bit more close up. I'll go slowly. So look, it's ended up with a collar. I didn't really mean for that to be like that. But I'll reach in. Quite a nice. finish. So that is much more wearable for me. Look at that! I can still wear it as a jumper with an opening at the back because that's how this jumper is designed. Same at the front as at the back. Do you see what I mean about the double-ended zip? It's so much more flattering isn't it? The way it splays out there makes it more kind of A-line. Thank you so much for watching. I hope Alexandra McQueen approves from up there. Bye. Comment below and tell me what you think.